welcome back or to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Haley and I have 11 pets. So in today's video, um, I wanted to talk about um, reptile shows and how it's been going for the pandemic and so far as for shows go, a lot of shows are open now. Um, also, I bleached my hair. Do you like it? Um, so I'm in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys about a reptile show and just a show in general of how, how much you need to bring with you, what you need to bring with you to be safe, of course, because of the pandemic. So let's get right into today's video. So of course, the first thing you need to make sure that you bring is a mask. Make sure that your mask goes over the nose. See, just like this, make sure it goes over the nose. And then you should be all set. My leopard gecko wanted to say hi. This is Emmy. I didn't get him from a reptile show. I got him from a pet store. Um, but they do have lizards there. They do have a lot of leopard geckos there. They had mostly leopard geckos and ball pythons there. Um, so if you are usually looking for a ball python or a leopard gecko, um, they for sure have them there. Usually the ball pythons rank up to $1,000 at a reptile show. They have all different kinds of morphs, all different colors. So if you're looking for one, they definitely have one there. Um, they had a lot of leopard geckos, all different, all different morphs, um, ranging from sixty to three, four hundred dollars. So if you are looking for an animal there, then I would recommend bringing at least two to three hundred dollars with you if you are looking for um, a couple animals. I wouldn't recommend getting more than two new animals at a reptile show unless you have space for more. Another big topic to talk about is impulse buying. So, um, a lot of people are more prone to impulse buying at reptile shows because they see an animal that they've never heard of before but they think it's really cute and they just have to pick it up so they just research that animal really quick at the show get try to get everything that it, they need for that animal and then they buy it um there's a couple things wrong with that one being you might not be able to care for that animal later on because of how long that animal lives you might not have had time to Google all that information or what they eat and everything like that. So it's not a very good idea to impulse buy animals that you have never heard of before and never seen before until that very moment. So it's best to do your research of what animals that you want to get um, um, even a couple weeks to a couple month, months before getting it and make sure you have everything, food, the cage, the lighting, the setup, everything before you even think about looking for an animal. Another topic to talk about is the amount of space. At reptile shows, it's usually very crowded. There's usually a lot of people there. And so because of the pandemic, just make sure that you are a couple feet away from people and make sure that you're not touching anybody that and don't cough on people don't, please don't cough on people <laughs> that would not be good okay nobody wants to get covid at a reptile show reptile shows are also a great place to go if you need to buy frozen mice and rats and chicks and stuff like that for your ball python, B Burmese python, any kind of python. Um, 
They also usually have um, live mice that I've seen there. So if you need food for your reptiles, they have it there. They also carry crickets, um, mealworms, and things like that. Um, insects, yeah, they carry insects. Um, so if you need to get some food, and they have very good deals, too. They usually have a really good deals. Mine was $10 for like 100 I think it was like five dollars for a hundred of mealworms for and then I bought some for my upper gecko um, so they have really good food deals that you can get if you need food for your animals they also have a great variety of tanks and cages lighting equipment heating equipment they have all that stuff there. So if you are pl planning on getting an animal maybe later on and just seeing what they had there and then buying stuff for, for it first and then waiting a little bit and then getting the animal, that might be what some people would do. Or if they're looking for um, more decor or plants, they definitely carry that as well. A great thing that I do before I go to a reptile show is I make a budget for myself. Um, I usually get a piece of paper and then I write down the animals that I have space for. As of right now, I have extra t tanks for tarantulas and Pac-Man frog. I also have other cages over there for a snake or so. So I know what I want and I have the space for what I want. And then I write down the budget of each animal I will spend on. So I know that I shouldn't go over this amount or if I want to spend a little bit more than, you know. So let's just say that I wanted to get another ball python and my budget range was 100 to 200 dollars and I see one there that's 400 and I really want to get that but you know what you have your budget and you stick to your budget and you make sure that you get another one that is in the budget of the 200 to 100 dollars so it's good to set you know limits for yourself so you don't um end up spending thousands of dollars on reptiles I know I want to <laughs> I want to, um, but then I wouldn't have money to do other things. So I have another topic that I want to talk about, and that is bringing your own reptiles to a reptile show. And let me tell you something, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Please don't bring your clean animals from your house and bring it to the show to show around um that is very unsanitary because animals there could have mites or some other sick disease and you could be spreading um those around and it could be getting and then it could get onto your reptile and kill your reptile as well as also harm the other animals that are there because you know the disease could spread throughout the whole entire time so that is very bad. Do not do that. Do not bring your own reptiles from home to the show. Another topic is when you, if you get a reptile, let's just say that you have, you got a new leopard gecko, okay? And you have him in its little container and you're bringing him home and you really want to play with them. You really, you really just want to get out, get him out and handle him. Um, don't do that. Okay. Um, when you get a new lizard like that or any, any kind of reptile, it's always best to just open the cage up, set them in and just let them adjust to their new environment for up to a week. I would say I've been told to leave them alone for a week. 
um, and even see if they are hungry, try to feed them. And if they don't eat, then that, that's perfectly normal. It's totally okay if they don't eat the first week that you get them because they're still adjusting to their new environment. So it's always best to just leave them alone. I know it could be hard not to want to pet them and handle them and give them love, but just, just wait. You can wait a week before handling and touching and all of that, and your animal should be fine. But if they continue to not eat or drink anything after a few weeks or so, then I would suggest taking them to a vet. And that's all for today's video. I hope you guys found some information that was helpful to you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!